Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Rattler with Adam So Fun, and today I have a special guest. Watch this. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> She's going to be laughing for about 25 minutes now. We're not going to be able to get this video done. Um, who are you? We're Kelly. using that. Oh, oh, I'm Kelly McKenzie of Genomi America. All of a sudden she turned weird. <laughs> what is this face you're making and stuff? I I'm good. <laughs> okay, well, if you watch the Facebook Lives or YouTube Lives or Instagram Lives, we went live last week and we had our challenge quilts. We went live just a few minutes ago. Well, yeah, this isn't coming out until next week. We went it's live last week. It's our first time. Mm -hmm. Hold up your challenge quilt. We did our challenge quilts. I can't tell if you can really see what this looks like because we're not behind the camera. So I will take pictures of these. Boo, boo, and we'll put them right there. Um, so we're going to show you how we quilted these. Um, Kelly's going to show you how she did hers. I'm going to show you how I did the negative space part on mine. So you too can go off and quilt your own quilts. And what pattern is this? Oh, that's right. I can talk about it. I'm like, we're going to can't talk about it. Um, so this is one of the new blocks, uh, block on boards from AccuQuilt. This is the Pine Burr block. Holy crap. There's a lot of triangles and they went so fast. I made three of these. So let's, let's be honest. I made three of these because I have the one that we're about to quilt, mm -hmm. the one Kelly and the one for me. And it was so fast. It was so easy because it cuts six of these little triangles at once. Uh, so I had two, two blue rectangles, four white rectangles to do all of the triangles, um, two blue squares for my blue pieces and four gray squares. And that did a four patch, the four patches into 10 inches. So um, it was super fast to make, super easy, and um, actually a lot of fun to quilt. Did you enjoy this? I did. We were kind of on a time crunch, so it wasn't as enjoyable as it could have been. Um, right. There's a few things I would have probably changed if I had a little more time, but hey, whatever. It's a great teaching tool to show you how to do this. And so, I don't know that I would have changed a thing because I really do like the way mine turned out, even though yours is like prettier. It. But I still They're like different. Mine. I really <laughs> like yours. Um, so, uh, as always, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Don't forget to follow me on social media, Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram, where you would have saw these two idiots talking to each other about this last week. Um, we can follow Kelly at Kelly Chain McKenzie on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And what is your Instagram? Kelly So So. S-O-S-E-W. She'll get used to saying it normally because you're trying to write things down. So Kelly Soso, S-O-S-E-W, on Instagram. All right, <laughs> we are going to bring you over to the machine. Yes. We today are working on the QMP20. I'm in North Carolina, and we are working in Charlotte. No more, Phil. Nobody knows where that is, but they'll know where Charlotte is. Okay, whatever. So we're just outside of Charlotte. But we're going to be working on the QMP20 with Pro Stitcher. Uh, you have the current update on? Yes, I do. I, so. I had the current Connect Beta on. The 798. Yes. So we are working on 798. Uh, we will be using Pro Stitcher. You could do a lot of this without Pro Stitcher. Um, you'd have to use a little bit of Mark's stuff, but mainly Pro Stitcher because that's what's that's what we're doing and that's what we have time for. Uh, we'll see you here in a second. Um, all right. So here we are. We are at our quilt. Um, Kelly's going to stitch out over here. We might change her side design up a little bit um, since she's going to use this instead of just cutting it off and um, pretending like this piece this piece of fabric isn't here um we might pull this design and bring it over there we'll decide when we get there uh, but she's going to go through placing the diamond doing a triangle doing the square and then i'll come in with my stuff but we'll probably end up stitching this diamond because i want to use that and play off of what i'm doing we're making it up as we go we're making it up as we go so here we are off to the races kelly janome go okay so the first thing i'm going to do is set my area so i'm going to go to the area tab I'm going to go to my diamond over here and I'm going to do a multi-point area. Okay, I'm going to just hit on the screen so that my hands do not go in the viewing of... So we're hitting multi-point up here. Stop for a second. Okay. We're hitting multi-point up here, um, but I'm going to keep you on the screen, on the, on the quilt top so you can see what's going on. And I'm doing more than just four points because I like it to be as accurate as possible. And I'm not going right directly on the seam. I'm going kind of to the inside of the gray diamond so that I have a little bit of forgiveness in case it's not perfect. And I'm not going to close in that last one. So there's my area right there. 
What I'm they, gonna... they can't see it. Okay. Oh, sorry. I forgot not to move that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file, design, and open, and I'm going to pull in the diamond shape and the diamond spiral. They're both in the PS-design folder, but I'm going to just get it from my drop-down box right here where I had it earlier. So Are they uh, square shapes, rectangles, or uh, block shapes? They're blocks. They're okay, both in the blocks. In blocks. Yes. So I'm going to pull in that diamond shape. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that. And I'm going to pull in my diamond spiral. And I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to rotate that at 245 degree angles. I am going to, since it's still on the select tool, I'm going to move it close to the other diamond and I'm going to resize it down. I'm going to lock the proportions and fit it inside the uh, original diamond shape that I did. Um, the reason why I'm doing two different designs, and I'm going to just kind of play with this and get it centered by using reposition, is because I didn't like how the diamond spiral stopped. It gave too much of a wide gap on one side. It kind of made the diamond look lopsided. So I felt like, just like when we free motion quilt, quilt echoing stuff makes everything that's not perfect look perfect. So in my opinion, when I um, do an outline of the diamond around the spiral diamond, it does the same effect. So I'm not trying to be completely perfect. I like what I see. So I'm going to come down here at the bottom of the screen where I have the select all tool. And I'm going to baseline this. And now that I've baselined that, I'm going to refresh my screen so I can see my area again. And I'm going to use the select tool. And I'm going to move that diamond inside my area like so. And now I'm going to enlarge that as one whole design. So my proportions are locked. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to plus it and plus it. And then I'm going to play with that reposition again and just nudge it around see if I can get it how I like it. I think I might do um, one degree rotations or ha actually half of a degree of rotation right here. Look at that. That looks pretty good. I'm not going to be perfect, but it looks pretty dang good. So I'm going to baseline this and now all I'm going to do is stitch this out. So I'm going to go to the Pro Stitcher tab, quilts highlighted, stitches highlighted, start in, pull up on, pull up auto. Everything's highlighted that needs to be highlighted. So I'm going to select that run button. I think you're already zooming in on the fabric, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to select the run button. Y'all won't be able to see that and proceed. And it's going to move to the start point of that out, outer design. And we will see you back when this is finished quilting. All right, guys, so this is the first one. It is stitched out. Uh, we are going on to step two. Again, this is where we're going to change things a little bit uh, because we're going to keep this design, I think. We've yep. chatted while we're stitching. So what are we doing? You tell so us. So what I'm going to do now, just to make my um, screen look better for me, is I'm going to go to area and clear because I no longer need that area. I had Really quick, clear is over here now. Everybody hates it, but just so you know. <laughs> and now I'm going to rotate this in a different uh, orientation what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come right here to where my seams are all in the middle of what would be a full diamond if it was not cut off and I'm gonna put my needlepoint laser light there and I'm going to tell this to reposition center and I'm gonna refresh the screen so you can see it better so I repositioned and I selected center and it centered that diamond on with with where my needle is at but before I stitch it out I'm just going to do a few checks and make sure by moving my crosshair on my screen that everything is going to still stay in the gray area along the, the edges of my diamond so I'm going to move it real quick to where the start point is and I'm going to move it up here I think it's going to be okay so I'm going to go back to the point so they can see they can see the screen. Nice. Oh, I'm fine with that. And this one, um, I'm going to zoom in for just a second. I want to just check something out here. So that actual start point 
on my fabric is going to be about right here and I'm happy with that too because it's almost like it's like right directly on top of that seam so I'm happy with that okay so since I am happy with that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crop oh no we're going to let it just soak we're completely out we're not going to crop it are you do you usually check that bottom point too or do you just usually check two no I, I should check the bottom point too if I want to be very thorough but I'm happy with that I know that it's it oh I checked it it's mm -hmm. great I'm happy. Are you yeah. happy? I'm happy. It's yours. Okay. So what we'll do now is just we'll sew out this diamond also. All right. We'll see you back here in a second. All right, guys, so this is done quilting. We are going to bring up the bobbin and trim. Oh, the hardest thing for some of you to do, and it's okay. Oh, oops, I accidentally took an extra stitch. Don't That's take okay. two stitches, and she cut the bobbin too short. I know, I'll fix that. <laughs> I'll fix that real quick. Just I have to time. tell you guys, this is funny because we do this all the time. Like, I feel like I'm always doing that at home. Um, and just, we do it too. So if you do something like that, don't get mad at yourself. It's just, everybody does it. Just, it's, nobody's talking about it. All right, where are we going next? Well, I want to quickly just save this so that when we go back to finish this after we're done with, with showing them this, mm -hmm. if you want to sew it out and we don't have to recreate it. Okay. So I'm going to go to File, Save, Selected, and I am going to just select Designs in my folders right here. I'm going to click in the name box, clear it out, and put... Adam Diamond. When I save things, it would have been like Adam D because I didn't want to type out Diamond. Well, <laughs> something you learn, you don't have to write so much. <laughs> I am. Well, thank you. Now everybody knows. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what's next? So I'm gonna just hit clear off, and now I'm gonna go and quilt out this blue square right okay. here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a multi-point area. All right. You okay with me moving the machine okay. now? Okay. So I'm going to move it to the first point. And again, because I am not a let's be absolutely perfect, my needlepoint laser light is to the inside edge of my blue box because the last thing I want to happen is for stuff to get on my triangles. So I'm this time, since I'm not going to be in the way of the camera, I'm going to use my diamond button on my handlebar to create a multi-point area instead of having to tap it on my screen. And that's because anytime you're in your area tab, you'll see that the icons up here are a star and a diamond. If you have any machine, you can keep going, you're fine. If you have a machine that has the star and diamonds on the handlebars, then you are allowed when you are in this tab, in the area tab, those um, functions are overridden and now I can use uh, diamond for multi-point, I can use star for two corner. If you ever set up an area for like, let's say you're doing, um, setting up an edge to edge, if you hit your two corner button and then you go and you hit your um, other button on your handlebars and you get this single line across the, the screen, that's because you hit two corner first and then you're so used to hitting that star button, you hit the star. So you've turned that two corner into a multi-point. So you have to restart over, just so you know, because it happens a lot. So now what I'm going to do is go and pick my design. So I'm going to go to File, Design, and I'm going to go to Open. I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to stay in the PS Designs and Blocks, and I'm going to find, I believe it was sp a Square Spiral. I'm not sure. Let me find it real quick. Yeah, Square Spiral Block 2. That's the one I did. And I'm going to select open. Do you always maximize that? Yeah, I like it. I like it big because oh, that's funny. I, don't, I don't know. I just mm -hmm. like it like that. No, that's fine. And now I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to get a rotate and I'm going to flip my design at a 45 degree angle. And then, you know what? Something crazy happened when I did this the other day. So I hope I'm not going to mess up. But I'm going to baseline this real quickly. And then I'm going to go to skew, and I'm actually going to select the first skew, and that didn't work. And then I'm going to select border skew. So the other day when I did it, the actual other skew worked instead of border skew, which was crazy weird. I don't know why. Neither skew should work. That's funny. 
Because it's a diamond. Because it's a diamond. So there's a there's something with ProStitcher where you can't skew into a diamond. I don't know. Way above our pay grade. Yeah. And I don't so. even like this. So what I'm going to do is undo and undo. And we're just going to do just like we did our diamond. And we're just going to resize this down. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select resize. I got my proportions locked. I'm just going to start minusing it real quick. And now I'm going to use my select tool. Oh, you know what? I should go to align and center so that it centers it in that. And then I will continue to resize it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to resize some more. And it's not absolutely 100% perfect because you can see that there wasn't perfection in me doing my multi-point. But I bet you when this sews out, it's going to look so dang good. Nobody's going to notice that. Again, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm going to baseline this real quickly. And then I'm going to just, it didn't accept it, but I'm going to select, there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and sew this out. Perfect. We'll see you when it's done. There we are, she's trimming her thread. That looks so good. This is this actually these stitch out so fast, especially now that I turned your machine up. <laughs> 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 Kelly was running at about sixty. No. Forty and sixty. It was, oh, no, it was, it was slower. It was slower because my timing was off and then I fixed my timing so but normally I run it on forty. I and can't 60. fix my timing. Give me a timing kit. Um, all right. Next one. What are we doing next? I'm gonna do one of these little diamonds right here. I can't see that. Which one? Oop one of these little diamonds right here. Perfect. I'm using that instead of looking at little bitty diamonds, I'm looking at it as just one whole diamond. Perfect. You ready? We're ready. I'm going to go to file and clear all and I'm going to once again once again go to area and I am going to do a multi-point area but I am only going to give it three multi-points because that's what you do if you want to use triangle skew and I definitely want to use triangle skew. Again I am staying to the inside edge of my triangle as I'm setting this multi-point area. That way I have a little forgiveness and grace if it's not perfect. So um, really quick because you made that really good point when you're using triangles, you have to, or if you're going to use triangle skews, you can only have three points. When you are making an area, I'm going to turn to come over here really okay. quick. Um, you want to make sure if you're using a triangle that this point count is here. It tells you three. If it says four and you close this shape, you might see a triangle, but you told a computer that there's four points. That's no longer a triangle. So. If you're going to use triangle skew, super important, and you do have a point count here, um, when you have that point count 250 because you've done a really crazy um, outline of something, take a picture and send it to me because then you're in the Adam So Fun Club. Oh, I've done that before. <laughs> I use areas so like outside of the box with placement and stuff that often they're like my quilts recreated with an area. Okay, are you ready? You're ready. So I'm going to get a file, design, open. I'm going to go find that PS design folders, but I'm going to click on the triangle folder underneath it. I'm going to maximize this because that's what I do. And then I'm going to go find the triangle maze. That is the design that I use for this and select open. First thing I'm going to do is modify that by rotating it. So I went to modify and rotate. I'm going to rotate it at a 45 degree angle. Bing, wada, boom, right? I love this, yeah. And then go to skew, triangle skew, baseline. And I am done. And I just need to sew it out. And you know, Pro is the only one that can triangle skew. No, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! We're awesome. Awesome. Oh, wow. Like, totally freak me out. Stitch it out. <laughs> we'll see you back here after stitches. Okay, so that finished. I just have to say, this already looks so good. It's uh, it, it films very well right now. If you look at the camera, she doesn't, she doesn't even look at the camera. Uh, oh. But I do want to mention something about um, triangle skew and kind of using skew and things. Uh, me and Kelly do a lot of stuff different, but we do a lot of things the same, just in a different way. And one of those things are when we are building an area, we don't necessarily go straight to the ditch. 
Um, I, I usually give myself a quarter inch um, buffer. I usually am not having the glide foot on. Um, this has a lot of really thick seams, so it's better here. But um, I usually stitch the ditch, which kind of helps with some of those seams and stuff. Um, but I use my glide foot to give myself like a quarter inch. I call it the buffer zone. Um, because Kelly comes right inside of this of the seam, it's not putting lines right on the outside. And sometimes that is really beneficial for us because if I look here, everything looks good. I mean, it looks perfect. If I look at the up at the screen and we see how it's skewed, um, you're zoomed in very far, but if you see how it's skewed, it's skewed right onto that line. It's right on that, oh, I just moved it. Oops, I messed it up. Let me zoom in. It is right on that line. So right. Right on that line. <laughs> so if we were off just a little bit the other direction, now you're going to be stitching in the other in the other uh, block. So some designs, when you skew them, pop out of the area a little bit. So just be aware. Oh, I'm still zoomed in. I'm like, why? I zoomed. I hit refresh. Um, just be aware that you're paying attention to kind of what's going on. Look at this design. I can see that it was starting over here and I can see kind of some darker lines here. So just keep aware of all of that when you're working through these. Great job. That's, that is the only three designs I used to create that whole pillow top. Um, so my part is over. Now you get to show all your fancy stuff. So, um, so basically we would redo all of this in each thing. And we actually talked about this the other day too, is that uh, Kelly likes to do one block at a time where I would usually do like four or eight, um, just in case they're shifting. I think that's the other thing that I build in that thicker buffer. So if things do shift, I just don't worry that much mm -hmm. because I have a little bit of edge to work on. So um, I'm gonna, uh, I digitize these triangles um, in designer so we don't really need to get into that and show you how to do that so I'm gonna pretend that I was using this Kelly design and if I were using that filming um, will you grab me my quilt top really quick yes if I were doing that I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit um, if I was using these spiral designs here in my negative space how could I take these designs and recreate them over here. So my first thing is I'm gonna look at the, tr the spiral triangle. So we have it up on the screen right now. And um, I like to try to stitch everything in one piece. Um, so Kelly has this design up, it's ready. It has, well, we're gonna baseline it. I'm pretty sure it was baseline. I'm gonna clear this area just to get out clear. And I wanna use this design. If I look at my quilt top, I can see that these designs, they're either going to touch here or they're going to touch down here where you can't see down here. So I have two touch points here and here. But if I'm stitching something that's going out here, I want to mimic these two. So I need it to kind of touch right here or uh, actually that one's going left. We're going to be doing the right ones or the left one. So I'm going to be recreating this. So my first thing is I want to make this design so I can look like that. So I need to rotate this. So I'm going to modify and I'm just going to rotate this to the left. And now I have that top block. I need another one of these so I can go edit, duplicate. And now I have those two. I can uh, air modify, rotate and flip this one. And now I have them looking this pointing the same direction. Um, I can see that this one has a start and an end, or this starts at the bottom, this one starts on top. So I'm just going to go reposition start point. It doesn't matter which one I pick first, reposition start point. And so now I've recreated that shape. This is where things are going to get tricky because I have a start point or an end point, a start point, a start point, an end point. So my end points and my starts are on top of each other and we don't want that. So I'm going to go to the top because I, I like to st stitch top down. It's one of my things that I'm crazy about. And I am going to swap start end. So modify tab, swap start end. Swap that in there. And very important, anytime you swap start end, the next button after that is a baseline. If you don't baseline that, there's a little glitch and it will not take <laughs> that. And then now I can select them both. 
I can see there's a jump there and that's because it wants to stitch the bottom one and then go up to the top. So over on the right side of my screen, I'm gonna tap my workspace tab. I can see that I have this group right here. I'm going to select whatever design I want out of that group. It turns red and I have these arrows and these are my way to realign those designs. So let's tap that up. And now I've realigned them so I can stitch the top one. It's gonna stitch right into the bottom one and I know it's gonna stitch without a jump because of the black box. Love me the black box, baseline. And now those, des those designs are frozen together, baseline together and I can go use this. Here's where the crazy part gets in. I need to recreate this block in the right spot so everything lines up. So this is where I just freaking love Pro Stitcher. I'm gonna come to this block, okay? And I am right at the top left corner of that point on my screen. We're gonna go a lot of ups and downs in this for a second, so sorry about that. I am gonna hit my horizontal lock. So now I can't move that, that machine other than horizontally. We'll zoom out a little bit. Coming back down here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to move this channel locked until it's a quarter inch. I usually have my uh, regular, I usually have my ruler foot on, actually my sure foot. So we're gonna pretend that's a quarter inch away from the edge, okay? Now I'm coming back up to my screen, oops. Can we see the screen? We'll pretend it's right there. Um, you've maybe you've never hit this button, but I'm gonna hit the measure button. So bottom house refresh, measure. And now when I'm leaving that lock on, when I move the machine a little bit, I get coordinates, okay? I know these blocks are five inches big, so I'm gonna move until my X says five. There we are. It might not be a perfect five, but we'll do it. Perfect, it's 4.98, that works. Now, my design is still selected here. Oops, I moved it out of the screen. My design is still selected here. I'm gonna turn off measure, turn off the lock, and I want to say Pro Stitcher, or uh, sorry, modify, reposition, top left. And so now it has lined these two up using that measure and using that lock directly in line with this. Now this is gonna be a little bit different than um, the one I made because we had this design come out instead of just echoing off the side, which I guess we could have done, but this is more fun. Um, so now I know these two are right in the right place and ready to stitch. So I can stitch these out, which I'm going to, but anytime I stitch, I always, always, always check to make sure that my machine will stitch without hitting a bar. I'm going to push my, my machine up so my orange line goes higher than my design. I'm gonna come all the way towards me so that my orange line comes under the design. I know I'm not gonna hit anything, so now I can stitch this design out. We're gonna stitch it out, we'll see you back here in a second. All right, so there we are. That one's stitched. What's your diamond button? Needle up, needle down? Yeah, needle up, needle down. Okay. So spastic. Huh? Um, so there's that. And you can't even really see it. Oh my gosh, Kelly's looks so good. And then mine's like, you can't even see it. Oh, there we go. Oh, it actually looks pretty, pretty dang cool. Um, so now here... Let's say I just want to throw some piano keys in there. Um, do I want to echo it? Do I want to do anything? Wh whatever I want, I can. Um, I don't have the regular foot on. I'm going to switch feet real quick. We'll be right back. All right, so I've switched to the regular foot because that's what I'm used to. And really at home, I would grab a ruler and ruler this. I don't have the ruler base on and things. So I'm going to create this using the mark function. Um, so this is a little bit different on how I did it just in general because we're kind of mixing mine and Kelly's designs back up. But I'm gonna to go to my Pro Stitcher tab and I'm gonna to go to record. And so Pro Stitcher record and over here on the sidebar I have the mark. And what mark is gonna do is gonna make, let me create a line that Pro Stitcher is gonna stitch. So I'm gonna create an echo line and I'm gonna turn you down and show you. Again, in real life, 
probably just gonna grab a ruler. I can do, I can ruler this really quick. But I'm gonna start here, and um, when I'm in the, the record function, my buttons over here have now stars and diamonds, so it's gonna override. So mark is my star. So I'm gonna come down and we're gonna mark that, use that star button, and I'm going to mark that echo coming down. It sounds like I'm making an area. The screen will kind of look like I'm making an area, but not really. Because I'm not getting a pink line, I'm getting a black line. We're going to hit about right here. So now I can look up and see where that echo line is going to go. It did something weird right there, but I'm not really sure. Um, also, I changed the shape a little bit. I might undo. Sometimes I can. you can undo these and say, okay, well, let's not put that center button in there and kind of fix that shape a little bit. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, I want to come over to this side and do that echo too. So I will move over, kind of eyeball where this echo goes in. And we were talking about this a second, oops, sorry. We were talking about this a second ago because these aren't actually the same size as these because of how the design goes. So if um, I had more time to think about this and we weren't kind of doing it on the fly, I would go in and edit it a little bit. I'm just showing you things you can do. I could have made them bigger if I thought about it sooner. Uh, but here's where my echo is and we're gonna shoot this way. So, on our screen, because I don't want it to stitch from here to here, I want there to be a jump, and it just so happens that we have a jump button. So over here I have a jump, I'm gonna hit that jump button, and you're gonna see on the screen, especially if I zoom in, oops, oh, I'm right on it. You're gonna see my green dot. So I'm just gonna move a little bit and do my next point. And now I've created that nice jump in there. I hate jumps, but sometimes you got to do them, right? So we're going to zoom out, bottom house refresh, and I am going to eyeball a lot of this. Again, we're making it up as we go. We're making it up so you get the gist. So there is my marked area. I'm going to stitch this because I need this for my next area that I, or uh, my uh, area to crop those final line designs. So Pro Sister Quilt Run, we're gonna run this. I'll see you in a second. All right, so I can't wait to show you this because I know some of you were looking at the screen. So if I look at the screen right now, I know some of you are like, uh, those lines ain't even straight, Adam. Like, seriously, get back to something. Now, go back to accounting, sir. Look at how good they look on the quilt, though. So here's my lines. They look super straight. You'd never be able to tell that those were not straight. And I mean, on the screen, you can see it. Here, you can't really see it. So stop being so hard on yourselves. So now I'm going to, uh, let's see, let's go up to the screen. My next step is to file. I have this design that I just quilted selected. I'm gonna hit close selected. I don't need that. It was called freehand. I still have those, I still have these here. I don't need those either. Let's just clear all. Let's just start fresh, baby. Um, so I'm gonna go to my area tab. We're gonna do a multi-point area and I wanna be so precise. So whereas um, earlier we're like, oh yeah, we're just getting close. No, 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 honey. We are getting as precise as dice, okay? I'm gonna go right on that line. Ding, ding, ding. And I ding every half inch, every inch or so because I'm gonna use this to crop. And anytime I use something to crop, I need it to be perfect. Mama ain't trying to look like a fool, okay? And I'm going to come almost to the end, shoot over where it jumped, and I'm going to work up the other side. I love the beep because I can feel my finger hit it, but if I don't hear the beep, it did not read it. Like right there. So let's see what my design looks like up here. 
Here we go. I'm going to move you over a little bit. Oh, more perfect. Great. So there's my design. This is the, the echo, those lines I made. Um, gosh, some of them look a little wobbly, but who knows? It's going to work. Um, so now I'm going to go file design open and I'm going to go down to Susan Manry because she has some really great piano keys. And um, my favorite one is just the traditional piano key. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to look at this. Uh, we can turn on our grid if we want um, and zoom in. There's a lot of stuff going on, but this design is a half inch and that's exactly what I want. If I wanted them a quarter inch, I can change it, but this design, I can see that the lines are working every half inch. I'm going to turn that grid off. Um, so um, because I can see the width is three and I have six lines here, um, that basically means that in three inches I have six lines. So there's twice as many a half inch because they cut every inch in two. So that's how I know this is a half inch. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, we're doing vertical lines. So my first thing is to go modify, rotate, and I'm just going to rotate this around. Um, oh, just kidding. I need it to, I need to repeat this first. So I'm going to go to repeat and I'm going to repeat horizontal and it can make it as long as I want. I don't have to use it. We're going to crop it off. So remember, anytime we repeat something, we're going to baseline it. Now I'm going to modify, rotate, and I'm going to rotate this. And I can look and just kind of, oops, I'm still in zoom. We all do it. And I'm just going to bring it so it starts somewhere near the top. But also, I want it wide enough. Uh, I'm going to nudge it so it's actually sitting over. When I did this on, uh, on my quilt, I had to actually stretch the width a lot more because my um, pieces were a lot bigger. And that's what I want. Crop, outside, edges, baseline. And now I'm going to have perfect horizontal piano keys. It's going to stitch and down and stitch and down and stitch and down. So um, watch this as it stitches out. It's gorgeous, glorious, beautiful, fantastic, stunning. Yes, yes, yes. So there are my piano keys done by Pro Stitcher. You can see that that over stitching is just amazingly perfect. I don't know who set that up, but gosh, they must know what they're doing. Um, I'm just kidding, I'm such a dork. Um, so one thing to note, because this is all that fits in my throat space right now, or all I did. Um, when I go to do the next one, so I'm just gonna hit undo, undo, whatever. Undo, we're gonna bring that master row back I am going to take my machine, take my needle to the row, okay? You stay with me. There I am, right on that row. Coming up here. The rest of the stuff is going to do on the screen. I'm going to go to Modify, Reposition, Start Point. Now this is going to stick that top row exactly where I need it to be. Over here on my nudges, I'm going to change my nudge to 0.5. So now anytime I hit nudge, it's gonna go down a half inch and just move it down a half inch. And this is where I would start. And then I would make it wide enough to fit whatever I need to do. Um, but that's how to get those lines all perfect. If this isn't perfect, that's okay. Nobody's gonna know if it's off a, well, they'll know a quarter inch, but like an eighth of an inch or so, nobody's gonna be able to see it. The other thing is when you're doing the horizontal row, like if you're, do, if you're doing this just like we did, or like I did, and you're doing a horizontal row across here, you get to do that whole horizontal row in one piece. I'm chunking this, I'm chunking the side, and chunking is doing piece by piece as you go, but this horizontal piece is something that you get to do all at once. So that's how we did this, just a little bit of how we did a few things. Um, this video is already really long. If, I'll make another video on how I kind of edited that thing in Pro Stitcher. Uh, there's Kelly's Wave Kelly. Oh. She's like, I didn't know I was going to be back in the screen. Um, so uh, that's how we made our stuff. It's really not that hard. I love that we made them so different. Um, <laughs> one's fantastic and one's Kelly. No, I'm just kidding. Well, our brains just think so differently. Well, I did this with Barb one time and um, like 
it was amazing the difference that we did. But so much I learned from seeing how you do things so differently than the way I do. Right. And same thing. I mean, the way that you did a few of those, I was like, oh, I would have never thought about doing it like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things I, I thought I thought it would be really fun. Um, remember, this is the Pine Burr, the Pine Burr block on board. It just came out. It's new for September. Uh, check it out from AccuQuilt. It made these go so fast to the point where I told Kelly that like send me fabric I'll cut you your pine burr stuff if you need to if you need more um, You could follow me on social media Adam so fun with an sew on Facebook and Instagram um, Don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop you are Kelly Chain McKenzie on Facebook and Kelly Soso on Instagram. That is S O S E W. There, that's how you should be doing it. Um, <laughs> also, thank you so much to Kelly for letting us uh, come make videos here. Use her uh, and Janome for using the QMP20. is a fantastic machine. has tons of bells and whistles. You can't go wrong with it. So if you're looking for a long arm, we're trying to upgrade. <laughs> It's a great one to do. Uh, you can always send her, a, send her a, a message. She can help you find your local retailer. Um, any other things? Nope. This has been a Love blast. Love it. It's been a blast. Love you guys. See you in the next one. And at the end of the day, it's just quilting. Go have a good time.